The publisher of Florida Sportsman says it smells like death. Red tide spreads up the Gulf Coast to Sarasota Bay and beyond. And Florida is in the grips of the worst water crisis in state history. <laughs> the governor says something must be done and probably does nothing to stop the solution at its source. The following spring in 2019, concerned legislators convene at the Capitol and agree something must be done. And then they probably do nothing to stop the pollution at its source. A few weeks later, a ray of hope appears. Representative Chuck Clemens from right here in Alachua County addresses the crisis in a Gainesville Sun op-ed. His message is, something has been done, and I quote, Florida's environment is getting better, much better, huh? and that is directly tied to the leadership of Florida. God, what a powerful affirmation. Is this the good news that we've all been waiting for? So I grabbed my cameras and I headed out last summer. And I went to more than a dozen springs on the Santa Fe and the Itchitakami and the Suwannee Rivers. I went searching for a reason to believe that our springs really are getting better. But I found no cause for celebration. What I found broke my heart and it pissed me off. To call our springs a biological desert would be an insult to healthy deserts everywhere. Many are now aquatic wastelands. Our waters are a mess and we know how we got here. Folks, this ain't rocket science. This is hydrogeology 101. We're still pumping too much water out of the aquifer. We're still dumping too much crap and fertilizer back in. Um. The pictures don't lie. It's another summer of slime, and I call bullshit on the denial caucus of the Florida legislature. Mm -hmm. This is a portrait of the tragedy of the commons writ large, and denial is still the mightiest river in Florida. So how do we get here? And more importantly, how do we fix this? In crisis, there is opportunity, but first, it's good to consider the backstory. A long time ago, our political leaders, Republicans and Democrats in common cause, saw that Florida was headed down an unsustainable path. In 1971, Governor Rubin asked you to declare Ecological destruction in Florida is nothing less than economic suicide. A year later, the legislature passed environmental protection and growth management reforms that were hailed as models of wise governance. But in the decades that followed, the pedestrian, oh, the, the pedestrian, the pendulum swung, and a new ethos took hold in Tallahassee. Environmental and growth management laws were recast as needless impediments to growth. Our social contract with the future gave way to magical thinking, and the table was set for the mess that we face today. And Florida politicians still refuse to connect the dots and help us see the damage done by our lifestyle choices and business practices. In 2012, I co-created the Springs Eternal Project in the hope that Floridians might be moved to protect our waters if only they could see the changes that I've seen. Now, many of my pictures of impaired springs were included in the exhibit seen here at the Florida Museum of Natural History. And I returned to many of the springs that I first fell in love with decades ago. And I paired side-by-side -side pictures of the identical view showing our waters in decline. The exhibit was viewed by hundreds of thousands and dozens of venues. And I mailed catalogs to all the key decision makers in Tallahassee. The governor, the cabinet, the DEP secretary, legislative leaders. I wallpapered that town. <laughs> I really wanted to believe that 
I just don't understand that this will make a difference. So check it out. A few days later, the Senate president returned my catalog along with a letter explaining that the state law made him return what was considered a gift. Now, I get it that Senator Gardner was just playing by the rules, but it really made me wonder. What does it say about political ethics in Florida when a legislator tells you that the rules won't allow him to accept the picture book showing the truth of our troubled waters? Even as the same rule book allows legislators to accept millions of dollars in campaign contributions from the very industries that they write about. Now, I believe that what's at play here is more than just historical amnesia or a philosophical aversion to governmental oversight. The nut of the matter is this. It's hard to get a legislator to understand something when their campaign contributions depend on their not understanding. Now, some, they call this corruption. In America, we call this democracy. <laughs> so the legislature is back in session again, and this time they tell us they're really serious about tackling Florida's water problems. And they've introduced a bill that they call the Environmental Protection Act of 2020. God, what great language. Is this the year that Tallahassee finally gets real about protecting our waters? So what do you suppose is the defining feature of this high-minded effort? Well, you guessed it. Let's stamp out the emerging scourge of rights of nature. And tomorrow will be a better day in Florida. So what about the rights of nature? And why has it attracted the attention of our concerned leaders in Tallahassee? At its heart, rights of nature acknowledges the self-evident tool that we can no longer ignore. We've been terrible stewards of our natural legacy, and the status quo has got to go. It's time to change the rules. The Florida rights of nature movement has really taken off in the past year. And local initiatives are brewing now in 14 counties. We're inspired by the movements that abolished slavery in the 1800s and extended voting rights to women a century ago, and only in our lifetime has recognized civil rights for all Americans. Now, here in Alasher County, Team SafeWar has launched a campaign to amend our county charter to legally enshrine enforceable rights for the Santa Fe River. The right to exist and to flourish and to naturally evolve. Residents would be given standing to take legal action against threats to the river ecosystem posed by the actions of business or corporations or government. And at scores of public events over the past six months, thousands of voters have enthusiastically signed our petition to put SAFOR on the November ballot. But to the surprise of no one, the legislature is now poised to preempt rights of nature across Florida. Now, let's be clear. Local home rule is at the heart and soul of democracy. SAFOR team members went to a Senate committee meeting last week to speak out against this assault on the will of people, and we got steamrolled. And so with preemption looking assured, why are these people smiling? <laughs> well, here's a hint. We didn't go to Tallahassee to beg. We went to the Capitol to speak forcefully for the right of community self-determination and a healthy environment, and we won't back down. Yeah. Now, we knew there would be pushback. <laughs> we knew there would be pushback because really, when has wealth or its enablers ever relinquished power for the good of the commons? Amen. Now, the question that I put to legislators was simply this. Do you deny the fundamental right of the planet, this planet, planet Earth, to exist? Unsurprisingly, no answer was offered nor needed because frankly, we already know where their vision will lead. But let me share with you a bit of what we heard 
during our time in Tallahassee. So here he is, the man of the hour, <laughs> Senator Bob Van Albritten is a citrus farmer from Wachula, and this is the man who is leading the charge to deny everyday Floridians the right to strengthen protections for their beloved rivers across the state. The senator justified his stance by saying, and I quote, nature shouldn't be elevated to the level of humans. Nah. <laughs> now let that comment sink in for just a moment, will you? Yeah. Nature shouldn't be elevated to the level of humans. Excuse me, sir, who are you calling an advanced species? <laughs> we are the one species on our shared planet that is poised to trigger the sixth mass extinction. And this Florida legislator wants to nominate us for the Better Than Nature Award? <laughs> urgent message. We have an urgent message from Earth to the Florida legislature. Never forget, you are a part of nature and not a part from it. more than nature needs you. <laughs> yeah, man. So yes, we seek to change the law, and we're not giving up. A campaign to amend the Constitution now appears likely. More broadly, though, we seek a change in consciousness. Now, everybody knows that the big trees got to fall down so the little trees can grow up, right? We get it. That's the cycle of nature. But the death of our waters? This is not natural. And this is no accident. Oh no. And what may appear to be negligent homicide is, in fact, premeditated ecocide. And that is. When I need a break from the insanity, I head out for a day on the river. I've long considered the Swanee Cooter to be my spirit animal. The concentration of turtles on the Santa Fe and the Inchitucky and the Swanee Rivers is a biological wonder of global significance. These ancient creatures remind us that there is so much to learn from the wisdom of the river. In Native American teachings, turtle is the oldest symbol for planet Earth. We are born of the womb of the Earth, and to her soils, our bodies will return. In honoring the Earth, we are asked by turtle to give back to the mother as she has given to us. And as we go to the river, not just to see, but we go to the river to feel and to listen. Now, edited for clarity, I offer here some of what I've heard. Um, yo, turtles, how's that environmental protection thing working out for you? So uh, what's the word on the log? <laughs> oh, geez, bummer. But the state has so many laws dealing with the environment. So, um, so what do you think about this uh, this new thing called rights of nature? Well, it's time to change the rules. Now, I get it. I get it. I'm with you on this one. Now, the turtles are not alone. And I think that I know what all of Florida might be telling us if only we would listen. <laughs> and what a wonderful world it will be. <laughs> now, in his State of the State address last month, Governor Ron DeSantis went after municipal wastewater spills, but he went mute on the industries that profit from polluting our waters. The governor is supporting a bill cynically called the Clean Waterways Act, 
Now, the bill props up ineffective agricultural best management practices, and it sticks it to the public to clean up after polluters. Unsurprisingly, this bill has the support of every major polluting industry in Florida. And in the words of one of the uh, Florida's leading environmental nonprofit directors, agriculture gets a free pass to pollute in Florida, and Ron DeSantis is Rick Scott with a fresh coat of paint. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It is with deep gratitude that we acknowledge the vital work of Florida farmers. We want to be clear. We are not against ag. We are for clean water. Florida needs sustainable agriculture that is economically viable, socially responsible, and ecologically sound. Yeah. What kind of business intentionally profits from inflicting harm on its downstream neighbors? And my question is, what kind of government is complicit in enabling such a scheme? We can no longer afford the false choice between a healthy economy and a healthy environment. Will rights of nature have unintended consequences? No doubt. But if you're looking for predictable outcomes, I predict that business as usual will be our demise. Inside the bubble of the legislature, the prevailing view is that polluters aren't the bad guys. Polluters are friends and campaign donors. They're part of the tribe. The people who go after polluters, now those are the bad guys. And that's why water defenders are mocked and vilified when we go to Tallahassee and have the audacity to speak up for rights of nature, it's more ethical in Florida to protect the tribe than to protect the waters upon which our very lives depend. Let's acknowledge our common humanity and set aside our tribal differences and get down to the work of actually cleaning up our waters. Ethics. Ethics is about choices, and our laws reflect our values. What then does the state of our waters say about us? And what is our message to the future? My grandson. <laughs> Here's the kicker. The crap that you see befouling our waters, by and large, this is, in essence, official state policy. We literally permit.